Hi, back again with another video describing another of Multimedia Sciences applications. Today we're going to look at Beating the Yellow Light, a piece of software that tries to investigate just what is involved in designing the length of a yellow light at an intersection. This application includes tutorials, interactive and graphical exercises, and simulations. When I first started to work on this application, I thought, this is going to be simple. Turns out that it's anything but simple. There are many, many variables, including the velocity of the car, the reaction time of the driver, of course, the length of the yellow light, the distance from the intersection, and the width of the intersection. So let's take a look at the application. We'll click on the Start button. You can see that the um, application is broken up into a number of sections. Uh, the problem, how do we go about designing an intersection with a traffic light with a properly designed yellow light? The solution, it turns out, requires a use of a number of variable and calculations and, of course, kinematics equations. So that's this application would be used by a physics teacher in a physics classroom. Turns out there are two situations that we need to look at depending on the locations of the distance from the intersection. The simulation itself will illustrate the solutions. There is a reaction time simulation which allows students to figure out exactly what the reaction time is. We'll also take a look at the braking acceleration of the automobiles and see how these are different for different cars. And finally, there's sort of an assessment where students will have to do their own uh, calculations and then see whether or not they get the answer correct. And finally, there's a quiz uh, you can have students take for, again, for assessment. Um, there are directions um, that talk about uh, an overview, the objectives, the procedure of the lab. Uh, there are a number of places where the students will have to take data and make graphs in order to come to uh, some kind of conclusion. So, as you might imagine, let's start with a problem. Here is the car. Here's the intersection. And we see the traffic light. And we're going to see that there are two situations. One, when it's properly designed, where we hit the brakes and the yellow light gives us enough time not to have an accident. Or improperly designed, where even if we hit the brakes, when we see the yellow light, we will be in the middle of the intersection and have an accident. So this sort of describes what we're trying to accomplish when we design the yellow light. On this screen, we ask the students to list all of the variables that they can uh, think of. Uh, if you had them in a computer lab, you could have them print out their answers and then go back to the classroom and discuss it on the blackboard and make a list. Turns out that there are quite a few, as we discussed earlier, um, and several of which we will not be taking into account in the simulation. One would be road conditions. Another would be the length of the car. Distractions such as cell phones, which is definitely a very, very apropos topic at this point of time. In order to start to attack this particular problem, uh, we need to make a couple definitions. One is, what is the distance from the intersection that the car needs to be in order to be able to stop? We're going to call that D stop. The second is, what is the distance from the intersection that the car needs to be in order to be able to get through the intersection before the light turns red? We're going to call that D beat. So these are the two distances that will be quote unquote safe. So we can figure out these two distances 
by using the kinematic equations. We can then compare them to the actual distance to the car and see whether the car is in a safe position or not. So at this point, I would ask the students to try to uh, derive these two equations for d-stop and d-beat. So that brings us to the solution. First, we take a look at the first equation, the derivation for d-stop. Uh, I won't go into the details, but um, this screen shows the answer to that question. So in this diagram, we're going to ask the students, uh, assuming that the d-stop is at this blue marker, uh, when will it be safe and when will it be unsafe based on this equation? We'll then ask them to choose. You can see that uh, and we'll tell them whether or not it's correct or not. I then can start over and try it again. Okay, here is the derivation for the answer for the second distance, the distance to beat the yellow light across the intersection. Again, we come up with an equation and we ask the same questions. Uh, only now we have a purple marker which talks about how what is safe and unsafe based on this equation? So that leads us to the situations where we have the two markers. We have D stop and D beat. And the question is, or the answers to the questions that we just asked will tell where it is safe and where it is unsafe for the car as far as these two distances are concerned. You can see this is the opposite situation where D stop is bigger than D beat. So those are the two situations. We'll then look at a simulation the um, simulation will show the safe again in green and the unsafe in red. You could pick uh, some of the variables. Here we have the interval, the, the yellow light in seconds, the braking acceleration, the intersection width, the reaction time, and the initial velocity. As I said, this is uh, somewhat more complicated than you might uh, think. You can ask students to put in these variables into the equations and then come up with, well, what is D beat and uh, D stop? You can see that based on the input variables, here are the answers. And we can change these. And you can see how not only how the equations change, but you can also see how the safety of the intersection changes. So playing with these uh, sliders gives you a pretty good feel how each of these variables will affect the safety of the intersection. I found this pretty interesting. Again, a lot more, a lot more complicated than I assumed. So you can handle this with your students in a number of different ways. Have them select what they think the most safe uh, variable settings would be give them particular setting numbers, ask them to do the calculations. It's up to you. Here is, so this is the reaction time that your students can use to see how quick they are. Um, what happens, you hit the start button, and then when you see the lights on the car go on, you hit the shift key. And you can see there is my reaction time. 
This screen talks a little bit about exactly why there is a reaction time, or what, what makes up that reaction time, and what, how those reaction times change depending on the situation. More details. And we go on to the braking acceleration. This is some additional discussion that you can have with your students of how that braking acceleration changes depending on the road conditions. You can see that uh, ideal conditions versus typical snow and ice, a little bit of difference. Uh, you can then go back to the simulation and try to change those accelerations. And I think you'll see obviously that uh, where the yellow light is safe and not uh, suffers appreciably because of bad road conditions. The question that's asked here is, is that um, what is the maximum initial velocity at a given acceleration that will make the intersection safe for all of the dis distances? In other words, when you run the simulation, there will be no red at all and they have the same simulation that they can play with in order to answer this question. And if they take some data, which is provided here, they will see what the graph looks like. You can see obviously that the maximum velocity uh, goes up as the braking acceleration also goes up. So the more you can accelerate your car, the faster you can be going. This screen discusses some of the um, outcomes of this, this problem with the maximum velocity going down with uh, reduced road conditions. Finally, we have some calculations where the students are given uh, definitive uh, numbers for the variables, and then they have to decide what the two distances are and whether this is a safe or an unsafe situation, and then they can see what the solution is. Reset, start over, it's totally random. And finally, there is quiz, which goes through a number of the uh, parts of the derivations that we talked about earlier. Of course, the actual screen where we have to decide is it safe or unsafe questions true or false questions so it's a nice little assessment for students um, so you can see whether or not they understood what was going on so that's the beating the yellow light application i really am proud of this particular piece of software. I think it uh, works really great to have students understand not only the kinematics equations, but how useful they can be to evaluate a uh, real life situation and how difficult it can be to do that kind of an analysis. So it's a uh, project based. Uh, I think it's a great uh, piece of software for physics classes. Thanks.